and welcome to Tough Talk. My name is Medina Azaki. My guest today is a one-time senator representing Bauchi South. He's also a former minister of the FCT, that's the Federal Capital Territory, and the longest so far. And currently the executive governor of Bauchi State. Your Excellency, Senator Bala Abdulkad Mohamed, many thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Medina. And congratulations once again. Thank you, thank you. How do you feel um, governing a state that is indebted to the tune of 137 billion, minus pension, areas, local, uh, debt. local debt? And then you also have the issue of dwindling revenue, which when it comes, it just ends up on salary with nothing left. And then the internal generated revenue is also nothing to talk about. How do you intend to navigate these waters? Thank you very much, my sister. We are just starting anyway. And uh, we are not coming into power blindfolded by our own uh, ambition to govern Bauchi State. We have done some minimal baseline surveys and studies. And what you are saying is something that we are very conversant with. That's the issue of indebtedness, our micro and microeconomic realities, our dwindling GDPs. Most of the sectors are not. Uh, contributing effectively to the GDP of Bochi and we have the lowest GDP. We are the poorest in the, in the Committee of States in Nigeria and because of that we have, we have 1.3 million out of school children with a population of barely 6 million. So we know our demographics is poor, well, we know our macroeconomic realities are very bad in terms of poverty and we know that the expectations are high. And also, the streak of indebtedness to the people of Bauchi is so amazing and uh, dwarfing because the sense of gratitude is so high on our part. Having abandoned an incumbent administration that has had everything to come, used everything to come back, and they voted, they protected their votes without giving them anything in terms of inducement that is tradition, traditional with our political activities. So we came prepared and because we are trained to a level where we feel we can do it and because of our on-the-job training, especially in FCT and within the federal arena, we believe we can deliver and upon that we knew that everything is knowledge driven in the world of competition today. What will give us competitive edge is knowledge based administration putting square pegs in square holes and look at, at looking at our problems and challenges as opportunities. What are the problems? Use restiveness, poverty, high expectations, low agricultural yield that is not supportive, is not capable of putting food on the table. Uh, of course, being a labor state where there are no industries, no factories, no industrial development, and of course, the traditional rulers, they all look upon the government and the, the uh, social sector, the malams, the ulamas, the, the clergy, everybody look up to government. There is no diversification of the economy. So we set up a group of experts, the Arewa Research and Development Group, headed by Professor Bugaji. On the day we won, we commissioned them. Before then, we established a group called the My Bauchi Project under the tutelage or leadership of one professor, so Yannam from the ATBU, to give us the best line studies on agriculture. What is the condition of our administration farms? What are the conditions of our agricultural output? What are the crops that we can, we can really build around different zones? What are the zones? What can we do in terms of whatever we can do to incentivize the people to exploit our agricultural potential? So yes, we have a lot of challenges. Yes, we knew that we are the poorest when it comes to competing with other states. But we knew we have other competitive uh, advantages or comparative advantage which will give us the competitive edge. Oh, that is com uh, competitive advantage that you have. We have the political will and we knew we have experience how to manage resources, come with a good uh, cash flow and also incentivize the multilateral and bilateral agencies to give us alternative funding, also to block uh, loopholes that we are getting in terms of revenue generation 
and create new ones by raising the GDP, GDP and making our people taxable in such a manner that it will not affect us politically mm -hmm. and also uh, raising the place in terms of making sure everything is knowledge based, knowledge driven and of course managing expectations in a manner that we will be able to pay salaries will pay pensions and gratuities mm -hmm. and also recover looted funds that we really buy here. We are not in this we are not targeting anybody. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that what is whatever is due to Bauti is in, in the country. Fortunately as we are coming, Mr President has approved the refund of about fourteen billion naira to Bauti at the nick of time. And uh, the past administration wanted to spend all the money in one day but uh, the institution of the EFCC has arrested it. So we have 11 billion to start. And we have also gotten a refund from the federal government, from the federal government, from the taxes that were not paid to Bauchi, about 3.4 billion. So if you add, we have something to take off, which we never planned for. And so it is a, a good omen that we are starting on a very good pedestal uh, in terms of making sure we launch an economic blueprint of bringing Bauchi out of the uh, uh, advice of one administration of, uh, of, the, no. of the past administrations. Okay, uh, we did see your agenda during your um, inaugural speech. I think about nine of them agriculture, agro allied, yes. and all of that. Yes. Uh, but if you're going to put a time frame to them, you're going to tell people this is what I want to in 100 days. What will you be achieving in 100 days? First 100 days, what will you be achieving in one year? And what will you be achieving at the end of four years? We're agreeing on this, but. but you see, government has what we call the code, uh, conduct, maybe out of secrecy. We have to be able to be there before we start making so much noise. I have learned a lot of lessons in governance, being a minister of FCT. When we came, the contribution of agriculture to GDP in FCT was 3%. We raised it to 10%, even though it was a capital, a federal capital territory. Here we are going to do so many things, which is our secret, which is our own blueprint. But suffice it to say, in the first 100 days, there are issues that are money issues. Payment of salaries. We have already paid salaries for this month. I was the one who did it because we had to borrow and pay salaries for local governments, salaries for uh, the state uh, workers. And all this infusion at the twilight of the last administration, where they brought in about 2,000 workers, we have reduced them in one day. Because civil servants are the impartial partners in governance. They have told us everything because we had to threaten them. And we have removed all these infractions into the uh, payroll. And we are paying them and we are going to get some savings. Secondly, fertilizer, because it's a pharmacy that Even though we have a more ambitious and well-articulated blueprint or policy on agriculture, mm -hmm. where we are going to use incentivize the uncle borrowers of the LCN, LC, uh, CBN and other incentives that we want to bring where we uh, bring uh, the issue of productivity, giving good seedlings, fertilizer. We have to make sure we launch the cropping seeding immediately in the first one week. That means we must produce fertilizer. We have already discussed in the last two days the fertilizer is going to be produced in seven days and we are going to launch the crop season and I will invite you. We will do everything to make sure the, the farmers get fertilizer and get some sort of uh, extension services. Next is the issue of Hajj, because the people in Bauchi, they are so religious about Hajj. We must make sure that all the accommodation, all the arrangements are fashioned in a manner that it will give them a better service. This time that I'm around since I took the first award as a best performing entity when I was in FCT. And so the issue of water, we are going to discuss extensively within the first week how do we produce the water requirement of Bochi, Metropolis and other city towns of Bochi, Azari, Gombe and Jamari and Das. So we have already sent out notices, we are going to meet within the next one month we want to address the issue of generating clean water. Then the most important and contentious, mm -hmm. the issue of cleanliness, environment. Yes. How do we clean about you with the dark yes. mm -hmm. I have cleaned Abuja, I have brought service providers. Here we may not be able to do it because we don't have a robust IGR behind us. Mm -hmm. So we are going to use the use that are idle, mm -hmm. that have limited skill, and form them into cooperatives within the next three, four weeks 
to do the cleaning of Abuja. Mm -hmm. But in the time being, we will do a task force under BASEPA, that is the body responsible for environmental sanitation and the rest, to clean the city using our uh, partners in, in progress, I would say, mm -hmm. the TIPA owners. Tipper driver they will come and you will see us doing it with myself driving it. Mm -hmm. We will clean Bauchi for the first one week that we will drive the initiative. So we will corporate social responsibility. Mm -hmm. Then we will form the cooperatives to continue that we will be paying them. That way we will be able to remove about 500 or 5,000 news from here up to Katago. And then we will, pay, we will be paying them. The money that the state government were paying, their, their cronies, we will pay to the youth. So that we will show them we appreciate or reciprocate the good justice of these people. That is for environment. And of course, for health, in the next 100 days, we will launch the first uh, emergency meetings or conference on health. Because we have only 44 doctors, and the hospitals have no drugs, the hospitals are death traps. We have to make sure we discuss with the stakeholders on how to move the health, the health sector forward. So these are the few things we want to do quickly mm -hmm. to make sure we make a difference mm -hmm. and then we put our people on the path of sustainable growth. All right. Um, you, you talked about um, the economic blueprint. Can you just give us an insight of what this economic blueprint is all about? I am giving you the, hands, uh, the, 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 the highlight of the economic blueprint is called Bauch, My Bauchi Project. Uh -huh. My Bauchi Project is first to do a baseline studies and see where we are. You have mentioned our, all the negative aspects of our indices that uh, Bauchi has found itself in terms of bad governance, this public service, the bureaucracy cannot even carry the policy. We have to train and position the civil service to do that. And uh, of course, agriculture is going to be the key. We will look at agriculture and bring experts. We have already done that in collaboration with CBN in collaboration with other associations in agriculture, the maize association, the, the farmers association, and then delineate the farms and take inventory of what we have on the ground in terms of land availability and do, because we have already done minimal soil testing and the rest, to know what we will grow in each local government and then bring service providers from outside the government who will provide services in terms of fertilizer, in terms of land clearing, in terms of improved seed and seedlings and extension services that will be paid by the workers, by the, by the farmers. Mm -hmm. This thing will yield, will increase the yield to about 500 percent. For example, if somebody is producing 100 bags, he will be able to produce 500 bags. What he need to do is to take 200 bags and pay for the services. He has made profit. So he will be a partner too in the business. We have brought somebody like Senator Ransa that is doing it in Zampara to do it at, in, on a large scale. We have discussed all these things before I came into the okay. So we are not coming blindfolded. That is for agriculture. We want to make agriculture a business. And we want to build some activities around the value chain of agriculture in terms of making sure we create some factories, some improvement on what we are producing, not only to be exporting. And we are collaborating with multilateral companies to come and grow cash crops like uh, sesame seeds, like uh, other seeds, uh, other, other crops that they are wanted in Europe and in China. And uh, of course, in terms of water resource management, we want to create so many, many dams. This is what I can afford. I have done it as a senator for Toro in Gumo, and the whole area has become an economic zone. So I want to replicate it in 100 places in Bauchi, where farmers would not be idle. They will be producing something during the rainy season. We have loose, rich soil in, 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 in Bauchi state. We are not in, we are in the savannah. And so we have the advantage of our geographical location where we will be able to produce all the around. Okay. That is for agriculture. For health, I told you what yeah. we want to do. Mm -hmm. And for, for education, all our schools are going on. Fortunately, I'm a child, I'm a miracle child. I came at the time when Bochi was supposed to access 4.3 billion naira for from Subeb. All our schools are blown up. Year in, year out, money was being sent from the federal government, nothing has been done. We want to declare emergency on education to make sure all this uh, the situation whereby our 
what's our purpose as schooling under the trees or sometimes even under the shade of anything would be a sin of the past. All the blown up ropes that we are going to enumerate engage us. We have to know their number and their cost. We'll be able to apply this. Maybe talk to Subeb to say, no, it's not about construction, it's about maintaining what we have. Even at that level, we'll engage NTI to make sure we train or we train our teachers and we also recruit teachers. But after we must have removed all the iniquities, all the infusions, all the infractions in education where we believe there's about 30% cost workers who are not, some of the primary schools are not in distant. I've just engaged some of the permanent secretary. So we will reduce cost, save costs, and then employ people, reduce people on the street. That's in all the sectors. Right. Um, the biggest threat to many states is insecurity um, that is threatening almost every state in Nigeria. So what will be your own strategy you know, to deal with insecurity? We'll we will do the, a lot of community. The Sarasuka you yes. know, boys. Um, that's what I'm saying. It is, the ideal mind is a devil's workshop. And that's why we are doing so much to make sure. I have told you, we will remove some of these boys by forming them into cooperatives to do not only the issue of cleaning, they will do environmental sanitation, they will engage in cooperatives to form farm settlements because we are going to make sure we bring experts to guide them, to give them services. They don't have to pay a call. We will also do some minimum profiling. This world is hard, but we have to do it because it is a hard thing. We must take the decision. Some of the use that can be used to do this to do this kind of job that we are envisaging by empowering an institution of payroll that is an institution responsible for providing some uh, safety, social safety nets to the use, and those that will not be uh, the rescued, and so we know what to do with them socially. I uh, will try to give them some minimal training and so on and so forth. But by and large, we are going to be very serious on security because we want to incentivize the private sector to come and give alternative funding, alternative resources, because we have dwindling resources from the Federation account. In that case, we recognize, as is in other clients, the need for provision of security to protect investors and generally to protect lives and properties. So we must be able to use uh, community policing. They are existing, but they are not being supported. In Bochi, for example, we have the, the community policing called uh, Amangua, and uh, of course, they are doing a lot before, but uh, they, are, they have been abandoned. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Spider Wells was giving, was giving us some kind of an organization under Bochi. They are not being funded at all. So we will definitely rekindle some hope in that area because even in that we recruit some use and make them rather than being recalcitrant elements in the society, they will become some positive partners uh, in terms of making sure they contribute their, their quota to the growth and development of policy. I'm sure from the campaigns to the elections, you saw the, the role the youth and the women played. I mean, I'm sure you noticed that. Beyond empowerment and job creation, and what role would they be playing in your government when it comes to position? How many percentage will be for men, I mean for the youth, and how many percentage will be for the women when your government For the time being, you can see most of the appointments we made are made up of youth. And uh, the only person of my age that became the SSG is because we want the aspect of bureaucracy and uh, experience to come in. We are going to engage a lot of youth. We we'll have to create a new bochi, and that's my bochi project. How many we'll percent? Not be so How many percent will be for? No, we are not going to restrict ourselves to the percentage. They will drag everything, mm -hmm. and of course, because we didn't come with any godfather behind us about all the former big names have opposed us, so we don't have the body of carrying their own hangers on or carrying their own uh, dynasties behind on us, and what we have are those people that are undirected. And we are not stupid, we are not novices in politics. We will engage them uh, a lot in terms of governance, but doing that we will put square pegs and square holes, not that we cannot give them job, even though they contributed more uh, in terms of our emergence, we will do empowerment for them. For you to drive the whole, these policies of yours, you will need a very re energized civil service. 
So what are, you, what are your strategies in that area? Very soon I will appoint one of the former head of service to be my special advisor on position in the civil service. And the consultant, Professor Bugali, has already given, given me some tidbits on what to do in the civil service. Definitely I've touched an area where personal patronage, some infractions have really destroyed the quality of the civil service. When I look at the permanent secretary, they don't look like permanent secretaries. They don't have administrative backgrounds. They were given these, of, these positions based on whims and caprices. And we'll look around and see what we can do. Even if it means bringing people back to the civil service on contract appointment. Luckily, I grew through the system as a civil servant from level A to level 17 at the federal level. And so I have a lot of experience in terms of the importance of abiding by the rules and regulations of the civil service and of course the financial instructions and we are going to deepen the process. All this thing is to deepen the process and make sure the service is positioned to provide services and infrastructure. And we will do that in such a manner that it will not impinge on our capacity to generate resources and do other services that is required within the system to improve the quality of lives of our people. Okay. What does it take to defeat an opposition party? It, the, uh, what it takes is just you have to be forthright, you have to get the confidence of their people. Most importantly is God and uh, you have to be sincere. I have suffered through life, vilification by the administration at the federal level, at the state level, or all that name callings and so on and so forth. But the people kept me dignified on that pedestal of uh, transparency on, on, and also of integrity because they know this is my house for the last 25 or 30 years. This is the house I built. Even as a minister, I did not allow Julius Bega or any big companies to come and build the house for me here in Bochi or in Abuja. I, I, I lead by example. And I made sure I used what I have. I didn't borrow any cover from anybody. When I didn't have, I interact with the people and tell them I don't have. Where I have, I unleash everything on them. So that is that issue of stakeholding, of identifying with the people, with or without money or resources on the ground. So it is not true that you buy bots. It is not true that it's only when you are rich. Nobody gave me a chance. And the secret of it, is that I enjoyed being underrated or underestimated and I spring surprises. How would you rate the last generation? To ask in Bauchi, I have restricted myself to Bauchi because that is my immediate political medium. I think INEC has done very well. And uh, even all the political players have done very well, except the, the opposition now, which is the government, who were busy arrogating themselves the power of incumbency the power of using the federal money, and I must give credit to INEC and to President Buhari for allowing people to exercise their suffrage, universal suffrage. In Bochi, we have deepened democracy. You can see they have voted for Buhari, even though we campaigned against him. They gave him the vote because this is a state that Buhari is number one, whether you like it or not. Yes, we have reduced his support, but he is far, far away in terms of blazing the, the road in, uh, in, uh, on the scale of popularity. Mm -hmm. Then they voted for me. And uh, despite all this thing they did in terms of rigging, in terms of infusions, in terms of infractions, I won. And of course, the PRP, because they had a good candidate, they won the House of Reps and other places. And the NNPP, a small party that has not won anywhere, has won in Bochi. So this has given you a broad picture of the outcome of all the electoral offices in Bochi. And of course we will say INEC was able to obey the whims and caprices, the wishes of the electorate of Bochi. So to me it was a good outing. It was one of the best outing of INEC, mm -hmm. and if I will rate them by the, on the basis of their declarations in Bochi, mm -hmm. I would think that my brother, the chairman, national chairman of INEC, had done extremely better than all the former chairmen of INEC. Is it because he's your brother? Is it because he's your brother? But maybe, no, not because of my brother, because it has worked. 
he has not stopped it. Even though he had, he is from Bochi, and they were putting pressure on him that they must come back. We had all the big men in Bochi, some of them even decided to support us because they believe in our candidature. I don't want to mention names. People in APC supported us. So our emergence was not just a, a matter of PDP or partisan, it was a bipartisan platform. When you, if you look at the national arena, there were a lot of complaints, especially the national elections where people feel that uh, INEC has uh, changed the, the, the table or turned the table. But to me, I will still go myself to watch. How smooth of a governance would you have, considering the fact that your state assembly at APC dominated? Your three um, senators are also APC? No, two, please. Two? We have rescued one. Oh, okay. And then your house of reps, too, majority are APC. How do you intend to deal with all of that? Because some of the things that you do, you need to go to the National Assembly to get them passed by law. Luckily, my senator from my zone is PDP. I just won, declared. My house of reps is from. Same PDP, we have the speaker, we have about five House of Reps and uh, one senator. And we are not, we didn't do uh, worse to it in terms of the state assembly. We have about 10 members of the House of Assembly out of 31. That's why I said in Bochi, you can see people knew what they wanted. If you go by the number of people they voted for and who were declared as winners in the House of Assemblies, then I wouldn't have won. But I won, and I'm declared. So the people are after what you can do. Already we are establishing synergy with them. I'm not afraid people are thinking they will use them to impeach me. What would they use to impeach me? There are a basis of impeachment. And my parliamentary experience will put me in such a, a comparative advantage position not to swagger, not to do something that will allow them to impeach me. I'm going to take them alone as my partners. In fact, they will be happier working with Bala than with Emily because I know their challenges. I know their constituency needs. And because I was a senator, I knew it better than my predecessor. And we will establish a concrete relationship in a manner that there won't be any problem by the grace of God. When you looked at the crowd during your inauguration, and before yesterday, what was it that was running through your mind? Honestly, I felt embarrassed by gratitude to God and to the people. And I was doubting whether I would be able to really uh, pay these people back. Because people who are about 90, 80 years old, so they have never seen a crowd like this in Bauchi since the creation of the state, even before the creation of the state. Even in the past republic, the whole town was an assemblage of supporters across party lines, not only the stadium. Those outside the stadium, even though it was full to the brink, were ten times the number inside. And they all brought themselves. Nobody transported them. That's why I said I have seen the futility of riches. It is not money that makes it in politics. It is goodwill. And you must be able to build it. I built it over the years. I made sure nothing is mine. Everything is for the people. And I respected everybody. A cleaner, somebody that you can just wouldn't want to answer him or dinner, I would sit down with him, eat with him and dine with him. And look at his problem. If his problem is 100,000 naira, I can give him 1,000, he will be satisfied because he knew that's what I have. So, we knew that we have responsibility, and that responsibility is beyond uh, deception, beyond delusion. We have to be very honest and to deliver. We cannot afford to fail, me and my deputy and our team. And that's why we said our government, the party is over, campaign is over. It is no longer only PDP. The people that brought me are not only PDP, but the people of Bochi. Irrespective of who voted who, my responsibility is to all the electorate of both state. The committee that is supposed to recover asset, you know, asset, um, are you also extending um, a hand to EFCC to also come in and maybe recover some of the monies? Whatever we are going to do, the institutional framework is best or the legal framework rests with the EFCC. We are going to do the administrative one, but the prosecution and the rest will do is with EFCC. 
We may get some retired people from EFCC to come and help us. Even rescue Namoni, on the last day of MBA administration, he decided to give mandate for the 11 billion that we got from the federal government. All the monies in the treasury, in the, on the coppers, but the, in special intervention of Allah, we matured two days to the exit of the administration. And because of their pensions for corruption, they wanted to spend all the money. They were not even afraid. And we found EFCC. You know my relationship with EFCC is not good. Yeah. But somehow to my surprise, my traducers, my persecutors came to the rescue of the state. Believing in the terms of reference or whatever mm. they are, they are, they are, they are, of their organization, EFCC. And they stopped the payments. And there we are. Because they were arbitrary, they were subjective, they were selfish, and they were corrupt. And so definitely we are going to establish a very vibrant relationship with the EFCC. I have always said it, I'm the most investigated public servant. And irrespective of my uh, status as a governor, which gives me humility, I know I'm being watched, and I told the people with me you are being watched, and therefore accountability is a key. Yes, there is politics in accountability today in Nigeria, but we should be careful and we should establish partnership with the EFCC in a manner that they will help us establish good governance. All right. Um, you are one time ANPP um, senator. Any plan to come to the APC any moment from now? When politics is dynamic, for now I'm PDP. No plans to go to APC. As I said already, we are leaving the party and politics. We are going into governance. I have said it at the risk of being seen as if I'm going to APC because people have come to tell me that ah, their excellency, they, are, they were speculating you will go back to your boss, mm -hmm. the president, why are you not mm -hmm. in the Senate and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that you are going. I said, no. If I must succeed, I must work with the federal government. I know the advantage position and the advantages of being with the federal government. But I can stay in my PDP, respect the institution of the federal government, and still succeed. I don't have Part of the oath of allegiance I have sworn is that I must work in a manner that I will not constitute a problem to the federal government. I must believe in the federal federation of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And so party politics is over. It's governance. You will see me establishing a robust relationship with the federal government, which is APC. And finally, um, the local government joint account, would you abide by that? So many bad things have been done in the past yeah. in terms of the joint account projects and programs mm -hmm. and I said it to my people who have to look at it because there are some legal uh, encumbrances because agreements have been signed, contracts have been done using the joint account, loans were taken by the previous administration using the umbrella of the joint account. That's where I felt bad because the economy people have been mortgaged for the next 30 years. We have about 250 billion naira. That is loan and indebtedness. We have not talked about local debts of contractors, which is almost equivalent of that. So a state like Boti that is so much indebted, and they, even the independence of the local government has been uh, impaired by signing away contracts, signing away loans that are not implemented for primary health care, for primary schools, for education, they are implemented. So you cannot keep them independent and then ignore all these obligations that have been signed by previous administration. I am a civil servant who believes in continuity and dynamism of government, of government. And so I cannot say I will discard it, but certainly I will try to raise a level or the, 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 the way and manner we give independence to the local governments. In doing that, we must make sure we bring quality of civil service, public service to the local areas or local council because they don't have capacity to even be independent. We will try to make them independent by the grace of God. Your Excellency, Senator Balam, the Gadi Mohammed, Executive Governor of Bochi State, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you, Madina, and uh, thank you for being a partner all the time. Uh, with or any, without anything, you always be with us. Uh, for the time I knew you as somebody who is very bad in Tuesday life, but uh, when you were asking me very hard questions, when you were asking my boss and my mentor, President Goodluck and Bella Jonathan, some of the hardest questions 
that I con uh, consider them impudent. But later I discovered that it is their wound, it is your character to be a consummate uh, journalist. Uh, I appreciate you so much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And that's the show. Join us next time for another edition. From me, Madina Zaki, and the whole team here, right now.